Now we talk about certain uh, common procedures that we do for malignant obstructive jaundice and benign obstructive jaundice. This will be just a simple uh, introduction to the various procedures. Now the Whipple's procedure is done for a lesion in the periampullary region or in the duodenum or in the pancreas or in the lower CBD. So whenever there is a lesion here, the procedure would be either Whipple's pancreaticodernectomy or pylorus preserving pancreaticodernectomy. Uh, pyloric preserving pancreaticodernectomy is done by specialized people who have gr uh, greater volume and is done for lesion which are generally periampillary for by and large pancreatic head lesions the common procedure is Whipple's procedure. And what all we do in Whipple's procedure? We do uh, a <coughs> uh, gastrectomy and that gastrectomy would be generally partial gastrectomy. Then removal of the bile duct and the gallbladder and we generally would be uh, removing uh, bile duct up to the level or leaving behind a stump of about a centimeter or two. So that's the level at which um, this is divided, bile duct is divided and then we remove the head of the pancreas and then proximal 15 centimeter of jejunum. So this is a, a classical Whipple's procedure. Now what all is removed I have mentioned you and importantly we will not go hunting for the lymph nodes only juxta pancreatic lymph nodes would come with the specimen if the lymph nodes are elsewhere that is a contraindication for doing this procedure. Suffice it to say that by this time we have already assessed the resectability of the procedure which I have detailed in my first part of the presentation. That is the kind of reconstruction that we do after Whipple's procedure and that is a common way of uh, doing uh, <clears throat> Uh, first, uh, we, uh, this is a uh, uh, divided jejunum that has been uh, the, the divided end of the jejunum, side, end to side or side to side depending on there are various ways of constructing this anastomosis. This is pancreatico jejunal anastomosis. This could be a dunking anastomosis or a duct to duct anastomosis. And then this is a colidoco jejunostomy here where the bile duct is anastomosed about uh, 15 to 20 centimeter from this and uh, <coughs> then around uh, for, to, uh, depending upon the uh, situation generally about 25 to 40 centimeter downstream from the colidocogesinostomy we do uh, end to side gastrogesinostomy after doing a partial gastrectomy. So this is the kind of re reconstruction. First thing is pancreatic jejunostomy, second is colidoco jejunostomy and third is gastro jejunostomy. There could be various ways of doing this procedure and uh, there, could, uh, there could be various modification but this is the most common way that this operation is performed. Now <coughs> radical cholecystectomy. Now radical cholecystectomy is what we do for gallbladder cancer which is causing obstruction to the bile duct. Now first we have to ensure that our patient is resectable. There could be a situation when there is a uh, gallbladder cancer within the gallbladder and the bile duct is not involved. If the bile duct is not involved and cystic duct cystic duct is uh, uninvolved by extension of malignancy then we uh, <coughs> don't have to do anything more than a, a radical cholecystectomy plus uh, uh, lymph node juxta bile duct lymph nodes or juxta colidocal lymph nodes. 
or peri peri hilar lymph node so these are the lymph node mass which are present along this bile duct which are removed but bile duct per se is not removed in a patient of ca gall bladder where the, the, the um, where, where the uh, this uh, bile duct is uh, cystic duct is uninvolved we do not do uh, this uh, bile duct excision but in a case that we are considering where the ca gall bladder has resulted in obstructive jaundice that means that this lesion has come up here so if the lesion has come up here after assessing the resectability we would remove the bile duct and show that our proximal uh, divided end is free of uh, malignancy and uh, then remove it right up to the head of the pancreas till it is disappearing behind the duodenum and that's the length of the bile duct that will be removed simultaneously and then we would proceed on to re-establishing the continuity for biliary drainage by way of hepaticojejunostomy. So that would be the situation in a a patient of carcinoma gallbladder which has spread to the bile duct and is otherwise resectable. And so uh, again for the sake of clarity I would like to mention that if hepatic artery is involved or the portal vein is involved uh, then our lesion is unresectable. So therefore a proper evaluation is in order to undertake this operation. And here what part of the liver we remove? We remove uh, segment 4A and, sorry, and 5. So these are the segments that we remove as part of the cholecystectomy and uh, that becomes radical cholecystectomy. With jaundice, it would be removal of the bile duct. Without jaundice, it would be a radical cholecystectomy and uh, looking at the cystic duct junction and ensuring that there is no spread to the bile duct and terminating the procedure there. But it always will remove, involve removal of the juxta bile duct lymph nodes.